CBS 6 News starts now. Tonight, days after rumors of a New York mayor run, former Governor Andrew Cuomo now being accused of sexual assault. What we know about the lawsuit from his past. Plus, one of the biggest shopping days of the year, how the capital region celebrated Black Friday. And a storm is set to come in a Sunday evening. I've got my latest thinking on what I think we'll get from it coming up. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us. I am Tom Eschen. A 21-year-old woman is missing in Albany. Azalea Gardner was last seen near the South Pearl Street and State Street intersection in Albany, according to her mother, Tania. Tania, the owner of a donut shop on Lark Street, says her daughter has not been seen or heard from since 5 p.m. on Wednesday. We kind of have no clue where she may have gone to. It's very outside of her normal, regular behavior. The family is sounding the alarm in this search because of mental health concerns and the need for medical attention. Azalea was last seen wearing all black, including a black winter hat with cat ears attached to it. Azalea is five foot two with light pink hair and blue eyes. Former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is being sued by a former aide who says Cuomo sexually harassed her while he was still in office. Cuomo's former as executive assistant, Brittany Comiso, filed a case against the ex-governor just before the expiration for lawsuits under the Adult Survivors Act, a special law which gave the victims of sexual abuse a one-year window for claims that would be otherwise barred by time limits. Comiso was one of at least 11 women who accused Cuomo of sexual misconduct, leading to his abrupt 2021 resignation. He has denied the allegations. Comiso previously filed a misdemeanor complaint against Cuomo, claiming forcible touching. That charge was dismissed. Politico reported just days ago that Cuomo is considering a run for New York City mayor. New York City's current mayor is also being sued for sexual assault. According to legal summons filed this week, Eric Adams, the NYPD, and a local fraternal organization have all been named as defendants in that civil suit. The filing does not contain details of the alleged assault, but it says it happened in 1993, while Adams and the plaintiff both worked for the city. The case seeks a trial and $5 million in relief. Adams denies sexually assaulting anyone and says he does not remember the plaintiff. We have a full story on the Adult Survivors Act on our website, cbs6albany.com. Twenty-four of the roughly 240 hostages taken by Hamas during its brutal October 7th raid on Israel are now free. Today's release are the start of a process. We expect more hostages to be released tomorrow and more the day after and more the day after that. Now, Israeli citizens making up more than half of the individuals released this morning. The group passed from southern Gaza through Egypt's Rafah crossing, escorted by the Red Cross on their way back to Israel. Fifty hostages in total are supposed to be released of the more than 200 still remaining in captivity. The three expected American hostages were not a part of the first 24. Of course, keep you up to date there. You can get all the day's top local stories, breaking news, access to our chiming galleries, and more. Download the CBS 6 News app. That's available for free on the Apple App Store along with Google Play. Well, today is Black Friday, the day celebrated across the country for big discounts. Celebrated for some and maybe not others, depending on who you are. In Saratoga Springs, shoppers fled to downtown area this Black Friday for its 11th annual holiday shopping event. According to Network Saratoga, 20 stores in downtown Saratoga Springs participated in a group sale promotion, with many deals spread out throughout the entire day. The purpose of the citywide event, to increase business for local stores. I wanted to support downtown, support Saratoga, see what we have local instead of going online to Amazon. Today is Black Friday, so um, it's just a great shopping day. Uh, lots of people downtown, a lot of sales all up and down the street, and uh, it's just a day where you can start your Christmas shopping in a festive place. A toy, a toy store, a great place to go. And, and Saratoga Springs not the only capital region city we caught up with. In Albany, we spoke with one shopper on, on why they love this day. Oh, the deals, man. The deals, 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 deals. Deals, 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 deals. <laughs> that is certainly one way to put it. At the national level, Americans are expected to spend trillions over the holidays. More on that as the program goes on tonight. Well, as Black Friday wraps up, some are looking forward to tomorrow. That's Small Business Saturday. Small Business Saturday is like Black Friday is a day centered around shopping. 
The difference, the shoppers are encouraged to celebrate and support law, small businesses in their community locally. This year, downtown Troy will have special edition tote bags designed by a local artist, free with purchases at participating small business on Saturday. The downtown district also challenging shoppers to a game of bingo. We are promoting um, a game called Elf on the Shelf. It's a bingo. So you get to go into the stores. You're going to look for elves in each store, get your card stamped, and you have a chance to win a $25 gift card from any of the participating shops. Clemente says pictures with Santa will also be available at the Art Center of the Capital Region. Also over in Schenectady, they're celebrating the holiday on Upper Union Street. They'll have their annual holiday tree lighting there. Now to a crisis in the classroom. One problem faced by schools shows no signs of slowing down right now. That's chronic absenteeism. New data from the Research Institute Attendance Works shows 15 million students are chronically absent. Chronic absenteeism, a problem only made worse by the pandemic, is defined as a student missing 10% or more of school over the course of an academic year. Federal data shows this problem is associated with significant declines in student achievement and threatened efforts to recover from the pandemic. Attendance Works found it impacts students of all ethnicities and is even more of a challenge for students with disabilities and English language learners like many of the migrant children recently sent here to the capital region. We've done several reports on how the pro problem impacts local districts and what they and officials have tried to do to fix it. Our reporting can be found on CBS6Albany.com. Investigators have identified the married couple killed Wednesday in a fiery explosion near the U.S.-Canadian border that prompted a massive law enforcement response. Kurt and Monica Villani died in the car crash on the U.S. side of the Rainbow Bridge. That's according to Niagara Falls Police. Investigators believe they were driving at a high rate of speed when the vehicle hit a curb, then a guardrail that sent the vehicle airborne. Despite initial concerns of a terror attack, the FBI has found no connection to terrorism and no explosives were found at the scene. The case was turned over to local police as a traffic investigation now. One person was sent to the hospital after a crash on Turkey Farm Road in Mayfield. The Fulton County Sheriff's Office says last Saturday a pickup truck attempted to pass two vehicles while approaching a blind curve. There, the truck hit an oncoming vehicle. The truck then caught fire. The Sheriff's Office says both drivers have had surgery at Albany Medical Center. According to Sheriff Giardino, speed and proper passing, failure to stay in the proper lane, and something we've talked about here in the last few days, alcohol, all appear to be factors in the crash. Police have identified the pedestrian who was killed after being hit by a car on Central Avenue Tuesday evening. Colony police say 67-year-old Mark Shimmer was hit around 6 p.m. Police say he was not near a crosswalk or a traffic signal. Police say the driver was unable to see Shimmer due to poor visibility from rain and snow. There are no charges pending against that driver of the vehicle. The Canadian Pacific holiday train is making its way through New York as we speak. The train tours Canada and the U.S. raising money, food and awareness for food and security issues. Since its inaugural trip in 1999, the holiday train has raised $22.5 million and 5 million pounds of food for community food banks at each of the train stops. Seeing here professional musicians playing free concerts on a very brightly decorated stage. CPKC says it also makes a donation to a local food shelf at each stop, encourages attendees to donate too. Tomorrow, the train will be making stops in Fort Edward, Port Henry, and up farther north in Plattsburgh. And the holiday season has kicked off in Amsterdam, too, today. This evening, locals enjoyed horse-drawn carriage rides, hot cider, and coffee, all to celebrate the beginning of the holiday season. But the main event of the night, the tree lighting and Santa's arrival. This is a very tight-knit community. Uh, you'll find that a lot of people uh, uh, just uh, enjoy being being out here with one another, celebrating on this very bridge, which was a big accomplishment, uh, and being able to talk about uh, the things throughout the year and the holiday season. Uh, it's just a time for celebration. So I think it's important for community to have events like this where we can come together and celebrate. There's the tree all lit up. This year's tree lighting ceremony honored PFC Joseph P. Dwyer and the legacy of service. While Black Friday tends to be known for shopping, that's not the only thing to do on Black Friday and Thanksgiving weekend. We're going to bring you the sights and sounds from another holiday tradition. Steve. 
And Tom, we got a cold one out there tonight. Temperatures have been tumbling, so this will lead us into a pretty chilly Saturday, but some moderation by Sunday, which will set the stage for the next storm. Temperatures are going to be close. Rain, snow, there'll be probably a combination of both here. So I'm looking at that for you coming up after the break. Welcome back. Well, Black Friday tends to be known for shopping. That's not the only popular thing to do on Black Friday and Thanksgiving weekend. CBS 6's Craig Adams headed out into the fields of a local Christmas tree farm where many folks were enjoying this long-lived family tradition. <laughs> <laughs> the camera's got to get a close-up of my awesome cutting technique. <laughs> All right. Let it be said, cutting down one's Christmas tree can be a bit of a workout. <laughs> or maybe not. Uh, it's just easier for me. I'm a little older. I got a bad back, so just a little easier. Makes it quicker. Still fun nonetheless. It's just, yeah, it's still just as fun as using the handsaw, but... Just like Black Friday, shopping is a big after Thanksgiving Day tradition, so is coming out and choosing the family Christmas tree. Since you guys are like half that size yeah. of you are yeah, now? Yeah, I mean, remember Nick, Nick cut his first tree down and he was little when he did it, and he's 17 now. Every year we come here since I was, since I was a kid growing up. We've been here, uh, gosh, a, a lot of times coming out here to Elms. Been here a couple years in a row, at least 10 years, I would think. Yeah. Looks like you're a little out of breath from that tree cutting. Yeah, it might be me, me being a little bit out of shape, but <laughs> we, we got it. We can. Of course, sometimes out in the fields, sizing up that tree can be a bit deceiving. Every year, <laughs> every single year, I'm like, that one would fit, and then we have to knock a, a whole foot off. <laughs> yeah, they seem like they're, they will fit just fine out in the field, but Always. once you get them inside... Somehow they are, somehow, they somehow they're twice the size when they're in your living room. <laughs> to quote a famous line from that infamous movie, Christmas Vacation, that's all part of the experience. Tis the season to be merry. Out at Elm Street Farm in Charlton, I'm Craig Adams, CBS 6 News. A lot of happy faces out there today. I'll add that I went Christmas tree shopping with my parents and sisters today. I fought for the tree that I wanted, and I got it. I was pretty proud of myself. It was cold and dry out there if you went out there today, but it won't be by the end of the weekend. Steve's in next with a look at what we'll get to this with this next storm right after this word from our sponsor. However you do the holidays, do it together in the Chevy that's right for you. The strong and capable Chevy Silverado, the award-winning Chevy Equinox, or the all-new Chevy Trax. This holiday season, do more together in a new Chevy. Current qualified lessees can get this Equinox for around $249 a month, or get 1.9% financing on all 2024 Equinox models when you purchase. See your upstate Chevy dealers. Well, our tumbling temperatures tonight will set the stage for a chilly Saturday, but you know what? We're going to get more sunshine than we've had the past couple of days, and the wind will not be as strong as it was today. So those two factors, I think, offsetting the chill and will make for a really nice day here. But again, really cold tomorrow morning. We'll moderate 30s to maybe around 40 during the afternoon, and then should see temperatures coming up several more degrees for the second half of the weekend on Sunday. But we'll round out late Sunday, Sunday night with our next storm system. Let's take you outside right now. Our Freihofer Sky Camera Network, we're looking at downtown Albany in town temperature in the mid 20s but a lot of spots have cooled even more than that in fact at the airport up to Saratoga Springs temperature is right at 22 degrees skies mostly clear and the wind has really dropped off low 20s at Glens Falls to North Creek notice mid to upper 20s back here in the western Catskills and that's because we still have some clouds a couple of flurries coming off of Lake Ontario we'll likely see most spots dropping back into the teens to around 20 overnight tonight so that is pretty cold dew point all the way down to 11 so the air is really really dried out and again, the wind, which was gusting 35 miles per hour at times this afternoon, is now down to come. But the flow is still coming across Lake Ontario. Little patch of flurries here have kind of reemerged in portions of the Mohawk and Schoharie Valleys. Um, even a couple of flurries now into the Helderbergs, down into western Greene County. This is very, very light. So this is not anything that will amount to much, but some flakes in the air here for the next several hours. But as the air continues to dry, we should see all of this dissipating. So I would expect it to be gone by tomorrow morning. Morning, 
and most of us with bright skies. We'll probably maintain some level of cloudiness back here in the Catskills with temperatures generally in the 30s. We'll do about 40 in the capital region. Bennington tomorrow, 37, 36 for Pittsfield. But again, brighter skies and lighter winds will come together to make for a nice late November day. Here's Sunday moderating into the low and mid 40s. So a little bit better. The wind's going to swing around into the south and the sunshine we get during the morning on Sunday will tend to fade out. I do expect dry weather will hold through the course of the day. It's as we get into Monday evening, make that Sunday evening and Sunday night that a surge of moisture will come in from the south. Two other systems actually coming at us. Low pressure from the south and there'll be a front coming in from the west. Now our temperatures here will be marginal, but I think we're going to be marginal on the side of warm enough so that for most of us, this will end up being rainfall. There could be some moderate to heavy rain, but the high spots, I think, may just be cold enough so we do get some snow, especially here across the southern Adirondacks. There'll be a strong south to southeasterly upslope low, and the higher terrain in Vermont will get a little bit in the Catskills, but that'll probably be overwhelmed by rainfall. And that will then kind of kick out of here Monday morning with this low pressure system scooting through New England. So dry slot first half of Monday, cold front then follows, and that means we get another surge of chilly air with gusty westerly winds, so there'll be some additional mixed rain or snow showers Monday afternoon. Really early look at how much rain we could get out of this, anywhere from, say, a half to three-quarters of an inch, some spots maybe as much as an inch, and very preliminary on snowfall. We have to watch the southern Adirondacks from northern Fulton, northwest Saratoga counties on north into Hamilton, western Warren County, and the very high terrain across eastern Rutland and Bennington counties for potentially several inches of snow. Very minor amount potentially in the Catskills here, but that would then wash away. And of course, following the system, another big dip at the jet stream brings another shot of really chilly air in here for Tuesday and Wednesday, so we'll likely ignite some additional lake effect snow showers, which could actually make their way into the capital region on Tuesday. So look for temperatures to come up a little bit Sunday. We'll watch for the rain and elevation snow Sunday night into early Monday morning, down to just some scattered mixed rain and snow showers on Monday. Monday up to about 46, with temperatures dropping only 30s here Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, gradual warming back into the low 40s by Friday. And really, once we get past Sunday night, it looks largely storm free next week. We'll just watch for some of those lake effect snow showers, especially Tuesday. Tickets for the annual CBS 6 Melodies of Christmas are now on sale. The show will be at Proctor's Theater December 14th through the 17th. All seats $36 each, and you can buy them online at proctors.org. The net proceeds from this event benefit the Melodies Center for Childhood Cancer and Blood Disorders at Albany Med. For more information on this year's show, search Melodies of Christmas at CBS6Albany.com. You may have heard of Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, or maybe even Cyber Monday, but have you heard of Travel Deal Tuesday? How airlines are planning to give big discounts to extend the shopping weekend. Welcome back. W double amputee Olympic runner Oscar Pistorius has been granted parole. Pistorius is serving a 13-year sentence for murdering his girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp, by shooting her multiple times through a bathroom door 10 years ago. He claimed he thought she was an intruder, but prosecutors say Pistorius killed her in a rage after an argument. A representative issued a statement from Steenkamp's mother. I'm not convinced that Oscar has been rehabilitated. Rehabilitation requires someone to engage honestly with the full truth of his crime and the consequences thereof. In South Africa, prisoners are eligible for parole after serving at least half of their sentences. Pistorius has served 10 years and expected to be paroled January 5th. Correction officials say under parole, Pistorius will not be able to leave South Africa's capital city without permission, will have to perform community service, and will have to attend a program to deal with his anger issues. A recent report says the oil and gas industry needs a rapid and substantial overhaul to meet global climate goals. That's according to the International Energy Agency of the United Nations. The IEA says that the current $800 billion a year investment into the oil and gas sector will need to be cut in half. Green emissions from fossil fuels will also need to fall by 60 percent to give the world a chance to meet climate goals. 
The travel industry is hoping to rebrand the Tuesday after Thanksgiving as Travel Tuesday. Industry insiders say it's the last best chance to find discounted travel during the holidays and winter season. On Tuesday, you may find a wider variety of discounts, provided you're flexible about when and where you travel. But Tuesday is likely your last best chance to score a good deal for Christmas or New Year's, a host of airlines offering deals. You might not get the time of day or the airline that you're looking for, but last year we saw travelers save upwards of 80% off of their Christmas travel booking on Travel Deal Tuesday. A host of airlines offering deals like $100 off flights to Ireland and up to 30% off flights to Fiji if you want to go there. The Salvation Army's Red Kettle campaign is back. Every year, thousands of bell ringers post up on sidewalks and outside of stores to collect donations. Salvation Army officials say donations have declined in recent years. In 2019, the Red Kettle campaign raised $126 million, but in 2022, donations dropped $102 million. That's likely due to the pandemic and inflation and the fact that people aren't carrying cash like they used to. The Salvation Army accepts donations via cash, checks, or digitally with Apple Pay, Google Pay, PayPal, and Venmo. Thanks for joining us for CBS 6 News at 10. Here's a look at what's ahead in your next half hour. Tis the season for retailers to be on high alert. We're going to take a look at a year that's brought with it very little cheer for some with a rise in organized retail crime. Six News starts now. Good evening once again. I am Tom Eschen. Thank you for joining us on this Friday night. 13 Israelis, all women and children, were among the 24 hostages released by Hamas as a part of an agreement with the Israeli government. Ten Thais and one Filipino were also released by Hamas. Their release came soon after the start of a four-day pause in fighting. Erica Brown has more details now from Washington, D.C. The Israeli army released video showing the moment a bus carrying hostages released by Hamas crossed back into Israeli territory. Danielle Aloni and her five-year-old daughter Amelia are among those freed. Her brother Moran is excited for her freedom, but he still doesn't know if his other sister Sharon, her husband and her three-year-old twin children are alive or still being held as hostages. You know, the moment that you wake up and you're not sure if what happened yesterday is a part of a dream or not, that's still uh, how I wake up. No Americans, including Abigail Moore Idan, are among the first group released. Two American women and one four-year-old child, Abigail, who remains among those missing. We also will not stop until we get these hostages brought home. This is just the first wave of 50 hostages expected to be released. And President Biden says he is still working to get the American hostages freed. Today's release are the start of a process. We expect more hostages to be released tomorrow and more the day after and more the day after that. 39 Palestinians were also released from Israeli prisons as part of the deal. This Palestinian mother says she might faint when her daughter comes home. The prisoner swap only began after both sides began on four-day pause in fighting as part of the truce agreement. The temporary ceasefire has also allowed much-needed aid to flow into Gaza. Erica Brown, CBS News, Washington. Well, if you're one of the millions of travelers behind the wheel for holidays this year, you'll likely notice a change in how much it costs you to fill up. But who should get credit or blame for what you're shelling out at gas stations across the country? Chief political correspondent Scott Thuman takes a look. As Americans are expected to hit the roads in record numbers this holiday season, they are also getting a small break here at the pump, where prices are $3.26 a gallon, down about 32 cents from a year ago. President Biden taking some credit for the cost drops. Just in time for holiday travel, gas prices are down $1.70 from their peak. Airline tickets are down 13% over the last year, and car rentals are down about 10%. However, are the accolades his to have? Politicians aside, uh, gas prices move because of economics, not who's in the White House. Uh, not solely focused on the United States. Oil is a global commodity, and it's wrong for politicians to blame politicians for 
economics, and it's uh, wrong for politicians to get credit for economics. Patrick DeHaan, analyst for Gas Buddy, says it's true the administration has cleared the way for more drilling as the war between Ukraine and Russia hurt supplies and Middle East countries cut production. So domestic production is way up to a record 13.2 million barrels a day. And oil production from federal lands and waters now higher than under the Trump administration. But President Biden doesn't talk much about that, knowing the far left of his party and some of his voting base would be disappointed. He paraded into the White House under cracking down on oil production. We don't see the Biden administration exactly touting the fact that U.S. oil production is back at a record simply because uh, his agenda was championed on potentially ending fossil fuels, as he so eloquently put it. Yet he says when it comes to driving the markets, it is still the global system and not just the White House behind the wheel. In Washington, I'm Scott Thuman. Well, as the holiday season gets into full swing, retailers are hoping for even more revenue to make up for extreme losses caused by organized retail crime. It's a problem that's been spreading from small towns to big cities, with industry leaders visiting Washington recently to ask for help. As Christine Frazau reports, lawmakers appear to be listening. More and more, the pictures speak for themselves. <laughs> and run on repeat from this Apple store in Philadelphia Free apples! Free apples! to this Nordstrom in Los Angeles and just about everywhere in between. Incidents of organized retail crime are piling up, resulting in more than $112 billion in losses, up from $94 billion the year before according to the National Retail Federation. They involve a number of individuals coming in often instilling fear and even violence against the employees and consumers and stealing large quantities of merchandise. The problem has grown so pervasive that Democrats and Republicans on Capitol Hill have joined together on new legislation to fight back with widespread agreement that penalties for these crimes are too weak. Right now, the tools at a federal level, even in some states in a local level, shoplifting is a misdemeanor, it's a one-off, so they're usually cited or and then let go. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto joining Republican Chuck Grassley and others to try to crack down on such crimes, which Congresswoman Dina Titus says she witnessed firsthand in a Walgreens. I said to the sales lady, did you see what that guy just did? She said, yeah, he comes in here two or three times a week and we can't do anything about it because management is afraid somebody might get hurt. The hurt, though, hitting communities where stores like this San Francisco Nordstrom have closed. <laughs> and consumers who witnessed the violence firsthand and will be the ones to pay more down the line. Y'all all stupid. In Washington. I'm Christine Frizzau. There are calls for a national ban on a popular children's toy, which some government officials, public health professionals, and concerned parents say can pose a significant health risk to young children. Mandy Gaither has more on the dangers of water beads and how to keep kids safe. A warning about these harmless looking toys. Water beads can be dangerous to young children if ingested. We are in the process to try and address this, but in the meantime, we want to make sure that parents, child care centers, schools are aware of the risk. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission says water beads can expand up to 100 times their initial size and weight when exposed to liquid. If a child swallows them, the beads can lead to vomiting, dehydration, intestinal blockages, and life-threatening injuries that may require surgery. Emergency departments treated nearly eight thousand injuries caused by the toys between 2016 and 2022 and at least one child died. Since they're made mostly of water, the agency says typical x-rays may not pick up on them in the body, leading to delayed care. A lot of doctors may misdiagnose and think that the child is just sick and send the baby home and We've heard that again and again. To keep children safe, remove water beads from any area with small children, especially those three and younger. Store water beads in a secure container where young children can't get to them. And if you suspect a child has ingested a water bead, seek immediate medical attention. Highlight this for the doctor who may not be thinking about it 
and they can take a, a closer look at the, the X-ray sonograms. That was Mandy Gaither reporting. The agency says water beads can also be inserted into noses or ears, which can also cause damage, including hearing loss, and may require surgery there as well. The weather is cold and dry for now, but won't be by the end of the weekend. Chief Meteorologist Steve LaPointe will give us a look at what we'll get with this next storm. And Saturday Night Lights, how one community gathered behind their high school football team tonight. The weather certainly has taken a turn for the chilly. It's a little bit of an understatement. It's pretty cold out there, especially in spots where skies have cleared, and that's across a lot of the area. Glens Falls, one of them. Temperature right now sitting at 26 degrees. Fryhofer's sky camera view of the city on this cold uh, late November evening. Albany's temperature a little bit lower at 22. Winds, which were gusting 30, 35 earlier today, have dropped to calm. And look how low the dew point is at 11. So that's an indicator of a very dry air mass. And with calm winds and clear skies in the spots that remain clear, we'll see these temperatures continuing to drop back into the teens. It's mid to upper 20s, though, back here in the western Catskills, Schoharie County. That's because there is a plume of lake effect cloudiness and still some very, very light flurries, which have kind of reemerged across this area. You can see uh, western Albany and Greene counties, especially Schoharie County, back into Otsego, Delaware counties. Just some flakes in the air here. This is very, very light. And as the air continues to dry, this over time will dissipate. So by morning, that should be gone. And I really am anticipating a pretty nice Saturday. It's not going to be warm, but it will be brighter than it's been the past couple of days. And the wind won't be as strong. So those two factors alone, I think, will make for a pretty nice day. We'll do upper 30s to around 40 capital region, mid 30s Adirondacks, upper 30s. Amsterdam to Oneana to Schoharie, about 37 there. Pittsfield tomorrow, 36, 37 for Bennington. Typically, we'd expect highs in the mid-40s. So again, we'll fall short uh, across most of the area. But we'll moderate closer to that on Sunday. So low and mid-40s here as the wind swings into the south. We'll start the day with sun. We'll end it with clouds. Dry weather holds through the day. It's Sunday evening, Sunday night. That a system will approach from the south. One will approach from the west. They'll kind of phase together across the northeast. Our temperatures are going to be right on the line. I am thinking we'll skew just warm enough in most of the area for rain with this, although initially maybe a little snow in the high spots across the Catskills, Berkshires, and then it might last a bit longer across the southern Adirondacks and the higher terrain in Vermont, where several inches will be possible. But for the rest of us looking at rainfall here, it could be a pretty good soaker, too, especially late at night and early Monday. Low pressure then scoots across southeastern New England quickly, so that will pull the rain out. 6, 7, 8 o'clock Monday morning. Cold front will then follow it. We'll have a brief little wind where temperatures will pop into the 40s before the next round of chilly air and scattered mixed rain and snow showers come in. So in terms of potential snowfall with this, again, we'll monitor the southern Adirondacks, the high spots in Vermont. There could be several inches, just a very little bit possible at the onset in the Catskills, but largely it should be rain there. And then as we move through the week behind the storm, it gets windy and cold. We'll watch for lake effect on Tuesday into Wednesday. Look at this high temperature is generally only in the 30s here. Chilly stuff does look largely storm free next week. Thursday, Friday should see a bit of moderation as temperatures head back to 40 or better by the end of the week. We'll be monitoring that Sunday storm all weekend long, but if you're not by your television, you can download the CBS 6 Weather Authority app. Download it for free by using your phone's camera. Scan that QR code on your screen. It's going to bring you the latest forecast pinpointed to your location. Today, Black Friday, one of the busiest shopping days of the year, but there are some factors co to consider when looking at the numbers. CBS correspondent Chanel Call has more from Queens. It's like a shirt with like a little skirt. Hitting the mall on Black Friday is a holiday tradition for three generations of the Lampley family. They were going um, when we were little, so now my daughter gets to experience it. So it's so nice. This year, the deep discounts they say are on apparel. I was like, new wardrobe time. According to Adobe Analytics, which tracks online spending, clothes will be discounted by 25% on average this Black Friday. My pajamas. Pajamas. Toys will be discounted on average by 35%. The Legos, we got like 60 bucks off. 
while electronics should see 30% cuts. We see shoppers really trying to um, minimize the impact of inflation on their shopping budgets by really harnessing this time of year to try to find as much deals as possible. The National Retail Federation predicts Americans will spend close to a trillion dollars this holiday season. That's up about 3% from last year, but also in part due to higher prices overall. I come to this mall like regularly and I know it's like there's better deal than this. And for those who aren't satisfied with today's sales, there's always Cyber Monday. We're expecting that Cyber Monday will be the biggest shopping day of the year with apparel and electronics driving a lot of those purchases up to just about $90 billion. As for this year's hottest items for kids. The top products are Squishmallows, Barbies, Legos, Tamagotchis. Analysts expect sales to continue through December with some of the biggest discounts this weekend. Chanel Call, CBS News, New York. The salmonella outbreak linked to cantaloupe has now turned deadly as the number of new cases has doubled. According to the CDC, 56 new cases of salmonella have been reported since the last week. So far, a total number of 99 cases have been reported in 32 states, including 28 new hospitalizations. Two deaths have also been reported. This comes as more cantaloupes are being recalled due to the outbreak. This includes Rudy brand whole cantaloupes, freshness guaranteed brand, as well as racetrack brand pre-cut cantaloupes. Symptoms of salmonella include fever, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. The talk of the town in Niskayuna, the high school football team. Tonight, the Silver Warriors squared off against Somers and the community rallied behind them. Dozens showed up at the Broken Inn this evening for a block party to cheer on the squad in the big game. As you can see, red and black and silver filling the area to support their team. What a scene out there tonight. And speaking of the big game coming up in sports, find out if the Silver Warriors could punch their ticket to the Class A state championship. And it was the first ever Black Friday NFL game, but the same old Jets will dive into their offensive struggles right after the break. CBS 6 Sports, sponsored by your local upstate Chevy dealers. Hey everyone, in sports, the NFL hosting their first ever Black Friday game today. The Jets taking on the Dolphins. And if I could sum up this game with one stat line, New York got their first third down conversion in the third quarter after going 0 for 11 on third last Sunday in Buffalo. Jets fans, I'm not sure what you're thinking. With or without Aaron Rodgers, this offense has been atrocious. But hey, the defense isn't too bad, down 10-0. How about Brandon Eccles picking off Tua, taking it to the house with a pick six, 10-7 fins. Now, check this out. Last second Hail Mary before the half. It's going to be picked off. No big deal, though. Someone will tackle Javon Holland, and we'll go to the half, right? Well, maybe not. Holland with space, midfield, and he's going to go. He's going to take it 99 yards for a pick six. What a play, and from that point forward, it was all Miami. The Dolphins route the Jets 34-13. Here's head coach Robert Salah after the game on their offensive struggles. Uh, we'll keep digging. We got to keep digging. We got to keep preparing. We got to keep coaching. Got to keep playing. Um, uh, we just got to keep trying to find ways to, to move the ball and score. Uh, whether the calls could be better, whether the execution can be better, whether um, our one-on-one -on -one battles can be better. Uh, you know, it's it's taking advantage of the situations we have. Um, uh, when we get them, uh, do I think play caller will will fix that? Um, I don't know. I don't have an answer for you on that. 
The Jets are losers of four straight with their already small playoff chances now on life support. All right, down in the high school ranks, Niskuna and Somers battling for a chance to go to the Class A state title game early on. Silver Warriors on the doorstep, reverse play. Cam Grasso getting the edge and scoring. Niski up 7-0 to the second. Same score, Somers responds. Max Sullivan on the keeper, barreling his way into the end zone, 7-7 then. Just seconds before the half, Sullivan again, 14-7 Somers with all the momentum going into half. 21-7 now, last gasp for Niski in the fourth, breaking out a trick play. Grasso's pass is intercepted, and that would just about do it. Niski in his season ends in the state semifinals 21-7. Now in Class D, how about the Stillwater Warriors? Stillwater taking down Haldane in the state semifinal game, 21-20. The Warriors stopping Haldane on a two-point try to hang on with no time left. Stillwater, for the first time ever, punching their ticket to the Dome for next week's title game. And the action won't end there. We've got three more high school state semifinal matchups tomorrow and up in the college ranks. Union taking on Johns Hopkins for a spot in the NCAA Tournament's Elite Eight. And over on the hardwood, we got a big one on Sunday. UAlbany and Sienna battling for the Albany Cup. Lots of excitement year in and year out for the Crosstown rivalry. And following a 75-62 victory last year, the Saints say they're ready to retain the Cup. It's going to be about us in, in a consistent effort, not getting too high or getting too low. Obviously, basketball is a game of mistakes, a game of runs. And um, now it's just going to be instead of seven or 6,000 people, there's going to be 10 or 11,000 people, hopefully. Um, and hopefully a lot of people come and support. And, uh, you know, downtown Albany is alive and well. Two teams looking to pick up a big win early on in their season's tip-off from a packed MVP arena set for 5 p.m. on Sunday. Tom. One of the cooler days of the year sports-wise in town, right? It's going to be loud in there, a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully a good basketball game for everybody. A lot of good football, I guess. You could say one way or another here this time of year. but All five classes in the state semis. Looking forward to college and NFL yeah. coming up on Sunday. Thanks, AJ. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching here tonight. We'll see you over on CBS at 11. CBS 6 News starts now. Tonight, days after rumors of a New York mayor run, former Governor Andrew Cuomo now being accused of sexual assault. What we know about the lawsuit from his past. Plus, one of the biggest shopping days of the year, how the capital region celebrated Black Friday. And a storm is set to come in a Sunday evening. I've got my latest thinking on what I think we'll get from it coming up. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I am Tom Eschen. A 21-year-old woman is missing in Albany. Azalea Gardner was last seen near the South Pearl Street and State Street intersection in Albany. According to her mother, Tania, the owner of a donut shop on Lark Street, she says her daughter has not been seen or heard from since 5 p.m. on Wednesday. We kind of have no clue where she may have gone to. It's very outside of her normal, regular behavior. The family is sounding the alarm in this search because of mental health concerns and the need for medical attention. Azalea was last seen wearing all black, including a black winter hat with cat ears attached to it. Azalea is five foot two with light pink hair and blue eyes. Former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is being sued by a former aide who says Cuomo sexually harassed her while he was still in office. Cuomo's former executive assistant, Brittany Camiso, filed the case against the ex-governor just before the expiration for lawsuits under the Adult Survivors Act, a special law which gave victims of sexual abuse a one-year window for claims that would otherwise be barred by time limits. Camiso was one of at least 11 women who accused Cuomo of sexual misconduct, leading to his abrupt 2021 resignation. He has denied the allegations. Camiso previously filed a misdemeanor complaint against Cuomo, claiming forcible touching. That charge was dismissed. Politico reported just days ago that Cuomo was considering a run for New York City mayor. New York City's current mayor is also being sued for sexual assault. According to legal summons filed this week, Eric Adams, the NYPD, and a local fraternal organization have all been named as defendants in the civil suit. The filing does not contain details of the alleged assault, but it says it happened in 1993 while Adams and the plaintiff both worked for the city. The case seeks a trial and $5 million in relief. Adams denies sexually assaulting anyone and says he does not remember the plaintiff. We have full story on the Adult Survivors Act on our website, cbs6albany.com. 
24 of the roughly 240 hostages taken by Hamas during its brutal October 7th raid on Israel are now free. Today's release are the start of a process. We expect more hostages to be released tomorrow and more the day after and more the day after that. Now, Israeli city citizens making up more than half of the individuals released. This morning, the group passed from southern Gaza through Egypt's Rafah crossing, escorted by the Red Cross on their way back to Israel. Fifty hostages in total are supposed to be released here. The three expected American hostages were not a part of the first 24. You can get all the day's top local stories. Follow that one. Breaking news notifications, access to our chiming galleries, and more by downloading the CBS 6 News app, available for free on the Apple App Store and Google Play. Today, Black Friday, the day celebrated by some across the country for discounted prices, usually for larger corporations. In Saratoga Springs, though, shoppers fled to the downtown area this Black Friday for its 11th annual holiday shopping event. According to Network Saratoga, 20 stores in downtown Saratoga Springs participated in a group sale promotion, with many deals spread out throughout the entire day. The purpose of the citywide event? Drum up some business for local stores. I wanted to support downtown, support Saratoga, see what we have local instead of going online to Amazon. Today is Black Friday, so um, it's just a great shopping day. Uh, lots of people downtown, a lot of sales all up and down the street, and uh, it's just a day where you can start your Christmas shopping in a festive place. Toy Store, perfect place to go. Saratoga Springs, though not the only capital region city we caught up with in Albany. We spoke with one shopper on why they love the day. Oh, the deals, man. The deals, 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 deals. Deals, 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 deals. <laughs> the only way to put it. At the national level, Americans are expected to spend close to a trillion dollars over the holidays. Well, as Black Friday wraps up, some are looking forward to tomorrow for Small Business Saturday. Small Business Saturday, like Black Friday, is a day centered around shopping. The difference, shoppers are encouraged to celebrate and support small local businesses in their community. This year, downtown Troy will have a special edition tote bag designed by a local artist free with purchases at a participating small business that is on Saturday. The downtown district is also challenging shoppers to a game of bingo. We are promoting um, a game called Elf on the Shelf. It's a bingo. So you get to go into the stores. You're going to look for elves in each store, get your card stamped, and you have a chance to win a $25 gift card from any of the participating shops. Clemente says pictures with Santa will also be available at the Art Center of the Capital Region. Schenectady is also celebrating the holiday on Upper Union Street with its annual holiday tree lighting. Now to a crisis in the classroom. One problem faced by schools shows no signs of slowing down right now. Chronic absenteeism. New data from the Research Institute, Attendance Works, shows 15 million students are chronically absent. Chronic absenteeism, a problem only made worse by the pandemic, is defined as a student missing 10% or more of school over the course of an academic year. Federal data shows this problem is associated with significant declines in student achievement and threatened efforts to recover from the pandemic. Attendance Works found it impacts students of all ethnicities and is even more of a challenge for students with disabilities and English language learners like many of the migrant children recently sent here to the capital region. We've done several reports on how the problem impacts local districts and what they and officials have tried to do to fix it. Our reporting can be found at CBS6Albany.com. Investigators have identified the married couple killed Wednesday in that fiery explosion near the U.S.-Canadian border that prompted a massive law enforcement response. Kurt and Monica Villani died in the car crash on the U.S. side of the Rainbow Bridge crossing. That's according to Niagara Falls Police. Investigators believe they were driving at a high rate of speed when the vehicle hit a curb, then a guardrail that sent the vehicle airborne. Despite initial concerns of a terror attack, the FBI has not found any connection to terrorism. No explosives were found at the scene. The case was turned over to local police now as a traffic investigation. Two people were sent to the hospital after a crash on Turkey Farm Road in Mayfield. The Fulton County Sheriff's Office says last Saturday a pickup truck attempted to pass two vehicles while approaching a blind curve. There, the truck hit an oncoming vehicle, then catching fire. The sheriff's office says both drivers have had surgery now at Albany Medical Center. 
According to Sheriff Giardino, speed, improper passing, failure to stay in the proper lane, and something we've talked about this week, alcohol, all appear to be factors in the crash. Police have identified the pedestrian who was killed after being hit by a car on Central Avenue on Tuesday evening. Colony police say 67-year-old Mark Shimmer was hit around 6 o'clock. Police say he was not near a crosswalk or traffic signal. They say the driver was unable to see Shimmer due to poor visibility from rain and snow. There are no charges pending against the driver of the vehicle. The Canadian Pacific Holiday Train is making its way through New York right now. The train tours Canada and the U.S., raising money, food, and awareness for food insecurity issues. Since its inaugural trip in 1999, the Holiday Train has raised $22.5 million and 5 million pounds of food for community food banks at each of the train stops. Professional musicians see them here playing free concerts on that brightly decorated stage. CPKC says it also makes a donation to a local food shelf at each stop, encourages at attendees to also donate. Tomorrow, now, the train will be making stops in Fort Edward, Port Henry, along with Plattsburgh. And the holiday season is also kicked off in Amsterdam today. This evening, locals enjoyed horse-drawn carriage rides, hot cider, and coffee, all to celebrate the beginning of the holiday season. But the main event of the night, the tree lighting and Santa's arrival. This is a very tight-knit community. Uh, you'll find that a lot of people uh, uh, just uh, enjoy being, being out here with one another, celebrating on this very bridge, which is a big accomplishment, uh, and being able to talk about uh, the things throughout the year and the holiday season. Uh, it's just a time for celebration. So I think it's important for community to have events like this where we can come together and celebrate. There is the tree all lit up. Isn't it beautiful? This year's tree lighting ceremony honor PFC Joseph P. Dwyer and the legacy of service. While today Black Friday tends to be known for shopping, it's not the only popular thing to do on Black Friday and Thanksgiving weekend. We're going to bring you the sights and sounds from another holiday tradition. Steve. And Tom, it's a cold one out there right now. As temperatures continue to fall, that means a chilly Saturday, but some moderation by Sunday. This will be in advance of the next storm that's coming in Sunday night. It's going to be a close call with temperatures. Rain, snow for some. I've got my latest thinking on how it looks to play out after the break. Welcome back. While Black Friday tends to be known for shopping, that's not the only popular thing to do on Black Friday, along with Thanksgiving weekend. CBS 6's Craig Adams headed out into the fields of a local Christmas tree farm where many folks were enjoying this long-lived family tradition. <laughs> <laughs> the camera's got to get a close-up of my awesome cutting technique. <laughs> All right. Let it be said, cutting down one's Christmas tree can be a bit of a workout. Maybe not. Uh, it's just easier for me. I'm a little older. I got a bad back, so oh just a little easier. It? Makes it quicker. Still fun nonetheless. It's just, yeah, it's still just as fun as using the handsaw. But just like Black Friday, shopping is a big after Thanksgiving Day tradition. So is coming out and choosing the family Christmas tree. Since you guys are like half that size yeah. of yard yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, remember Nick? Nick cut his first tree down, and he was little when he did it, and he's 17 now. Every year we come here since I was since I was a kid growing up. We've been here, uh, gosh, a, a lot of times coming out here to Elms. Been here a couple years in a row, at least 10 years, I would think. Yeah. Looks like you're a little out of breath from that tree cutting. Yeah, it might be me, me being a little bit out of shape, but <laughs> we, we got it. We can. Of course, sometimes out in the fields, sizing up that tree can be a bit deceiving. Every year, every single year, I'm like, that one would fit, and then we have to knock an, a whole foot off. <laughs> yeah, they seem like they're, they will fit just fine out in the field, but Always. once you get them inside, somehow they are somehow, they somehow the they're twice the size when they're in your living room. <laughs> to quote a famous line from that infamous movie, Christmas Vacation, that's all part of the experience. Tis the season to be merry. Out at Elm Street Farm in Charlton, I'm Craig Adams, CBS 6 News. A lot of happy faces out there today. Good to see that. It was pretty cold and dry today, but won't be by the end of the weekend. Steve's in next with a look at what maybe a possible storm could bring us at the end of the weekend. But that's after a word from our sponsor. However you do the holidays, do it together in the Chevy that's right for you. The strong and capable Chevy Silverado, the award-winning Chevy Equinox, or the all-new Chevy Trax. 
This holiday season, do more together in a new Chevy. Current qualified lessees can get this Equinox for around $249 a month or get 1.9% financing on all 2024 Equinox models when you purchase. See your upstate Chevy dealers. Well, temperatures have been tumbling this evening, especially in spots where skies are clear, and that's a lot of the area. The wind, which was really strong this afternoon, has dropped off a lot, so that's allowed for some radiational cooling. So look for a really cold morning tomorrow morning, low in mid-20s, 7, 8 o'clock. Numbers generally only coming up into the 30s. We might just clip 40 in the capital region. That's a bit below average. But going for us tomorrow will be brighter skies than we've had the past couple of days, and the fact the wind is not going to be as strong. So it's a nice-looking day. We should turn a little bit warmer by Sunday. Let's take outside right now for Ihoffer Sky Camera Network. We are looking at Schenectady at this hour. Temperature in the mid-20s in Schenectady right now. Sky's clear here in the capital region, but we do have some clouds and even some flurries just to the west. 25 at Albany, that's actually up a couple of degrees from the last hour. That's because the wind is picked back up again. It was calm there for a little while. We've got a west-northwest breeze at 8. Dew point at uh, 14. Feels like 16. Wind chills right now running in the mid-teens with that breeze. Notice mid and high 20s, Schoharie County on west versus 20 at Glens Falls, and temperatures close to 20 in parts of Vermont. And that's because we've got some clouds back in here. The flow continues across Lake Ontario. Although it's weakened, it's picking up moisture, so low clouds and this area of white. Indeed, some very light flurries that have kind of reemerged. Schoharie County, Otsego, Delaware counties, they're kind of out of Montgomery County right now into southwest Albany and Greene counties. Basically, just some flakes in the air, nothing that will really stick or be meaningful. And as the air continues to dry throughout the night's night, we'll see these kind of continuing to diminish. So by morning, they're gone. And that again sets the stage for a pretty good looking day here with a decent amount of sunshine, putting temperatures only into the 30s. Typically, we'd expect highs in the mid 40s. So we'll fall short of that a bit. But again, with the bright skies and the lighter wind conditions, Saturday looks pretty good. Sunday, a little milder, low and mid 40s. We'll start with sunshine. Wind will swing into the south, help to push the temperatures up. But at the same time, clouds will roll in. Rolling in advance of the next storm system, which will approach from the south and the west. It's actually two separate systems kind of coming together across the northeast. As we get into Sunday evening, I'm looking for a cold rain to break out. Now, temperatures are going to be close. So the implication is high spots will get some snow out of this, but I think for most of us it's rain. Initially, maybe a bit in the Catskills, but we'll watch southern Vermont and especially the southern Adirondacks. You can see here midnight uh, Monday, big area of blue shows up, and that's what strong southerly flow upsloping in the Adirondacks and the high spots in Vermont squeezing out moisture with temperatures cold enough to support some wet snow there. The yellows, the greens, that's all rain for most of the area. And this could be a pretty good rain too, moderate to heavy, but pulling out very quickly early Monday morning. So we'll be left kind of in a dry slot Monday morning with temperatures popping at least briefly into the mid 40s. Then that cold front will come through and start the chill down process again. Gusty wind, a few scattered mixed rain and snow showers by Monday afternoon. Early call on rainfall potential, a half to three quarters of an inch. So again, a good soaker, maybe a few spots as much as an inch. And here's an early call on potential snowfall. Again, southern Adirondacks, that's Hamilton. There's northern, western Warren County. Could be several inches of snow. And the high spots here across eastern Rutland, Bennington, maybe into northern Berkshire County. The potential is there for several inches of snow. So we'll watch for that. Of course, in the wake of the system, another trough of low pressure moves in. Big punch of chilly air. This will be for Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll likely see some active lake effect snow showers during that period. And and temperatures once again dropping much below average. So we'll see a little moderation Sunday. Rain with some elevation snow Sunday night. Kind of kicks out Monday morning, leaving us with a few mixed rain and snow showers. 46 early and then dropping only 30s here. Tuesday, Wednesday, windy. And again, Tuesday, a good candidate day for a lot of snow showers. Thursday, Friday, looking quiet. So it's largely storm free next week. Some moderation by the end of next week as well. Tom. We'll be monitoring that Sunday storm all weekend long, but when you're not near your TV, get the CBS 6 Weather Authority app. You can download it for free. Use that phone's camera to scan the QR code on your screen. It'll bring you the latest forecast pinpointed to your location. Tickets for the annual CBS 6 Melodies of Christmas are now on sale. The show will be at Proctor's Theater December 14th through the 17th. All seats are $36 each, and you can buy them online at proctors.org. The net proceeds from the event benefit the Melody Center for Childhood Cancer and Blood Disorders at Albany Med. For more information on this year's show, search Melodies of Christmas at cbs6albany.com.
Well, you may have heard of Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, maybe even Cyber Monday. But have you heard of Travel Day Tuesday? How airlines are planning to give big discounts to extend the shopping weekend. Double amputee Olympic runner Oscar Pistorius has been granted parole. Pistorius is serving a 13-year sentence for murdering his girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp, by shooting her multiple times through a bathroom door 10 years ago. He claimed he thought she was an intruder, but prosecutors say Pistorius killed her in a rage after an argument. A representative issued a statement from Steenkamp's mother. I'm not convinced that Oscar has been rehabilitated. Rehabilitation requires someone to engage honestly with the full truth of his crime and the consequences thereof. In South Africa, prisoners are eligible for parole after serving at least half of their sentences. Pistorius has served 10 years and is expected to be paroled January 5th. Correction officials say under parole, Pistorius will not be able to leave South Africa's capital city without permission and will have to perform community service and will attend a program to deal with his anger issues too. A new report states the oil and gas industry needs a rapid and substantial overhaul to meet global climate goals. That's according to the International Energy Agency of the United Nations. The IEA says that the current $800 billion a year investment into the oil and gas sector will need to be cut in half. Green emissions from fossil fuels will also need to fall by 60% to give the world a chance to meet climate goals. That's according to the IEA. The travel industry is hoping to rebrand the Tuesday after Thanksgiving as Travel Tuesday. Industry insiders say it's the last best chance to find discounted travel during the holidays and winter season. On Tuesday, you may find a wider variety of discounts provided you're flexible about when and where you travel. But Tuesday is likely your last best chance to score a good deal for Christmas or New Year's. A host of airlines offering deals. Haley Berg is a travel app of Hopper's lead economist. You might not get the time of day or the airline that you're looking for, but last year we saw travelers save upwards of 80% off of their Christmas travel booking on Travel Deal Tuesday. A host of airlines offering deals like $100 off flights to Ireland and up to 30% off flights to Fiji. Personally, I prefer Giving Tuesday. That's a pretty good moniker, too. The talk of the town in Niskayuna, the high school football team. Tonight, the Silver Warriors squared off against Somers and the community rallied behind them tonight. Dozens showed up at the Broken Inn this evening for a block party to cheer on the squad in their big game. As you can see, red and black and silver filling the area to support their team. Great turnout there tonight. And speaking of that big game, coming up in sports, we'll find out if the Silver Warriors could punch their ticket to the Class A State Championship. And it was the first ever Black Friday NFL game with the same old Jets. We'll dive into their offensive struggles right after the break. Now, CBS 6 Sports, sponsored by your local Upstate Chevy dealers. Hey everyone, in sports, the NFL holding their first ever Black Friday game today. The Jets taking on the Dolphins. Now, if I could sum this game up in one stat line, New York got their first third down conversion in the third quarter after going 0 for 11 on third down last Sunday in Buffalo. Jets fans, I'm not sure what you're thinking right now. With or without Aaron Rodgers, this offense has been atrocious. But hey, the defense, not too bad. Down 10 nothing. How about Brandon Eccles picking off Tua, taking it to the house of the pick six, 10-7 fins. Now, check this out. Last second Hail Mary right before the half. It's going to be picked off. No big deal, though. Someone will tackle Javon Holland, and we're just going to go to the half 10-7, right? Well, maybe not. Holland's got space past midfield. He's going to take it 99 yards for a pick six. What a play. And from that point forward, it was all Miami. The Dolphins route the Jets 34-13. Here's head coach Robert Salah after the game on the offensive struggles. Uh, we'll keep digging. We got to keep digging. We got to keep preparing. We got to keep coaching. Got to keep playing. Um, uh, we just got to keep trying to find ways to, to move the ball and score. Uh, whether the calls could be better, whether the execution can be better, whether 
Um, our one-on-one -on -one battles can be better. Uh, you know, it's it's taking advantage of the situations we have. Um, uh, when we get them, uh, do I think play caller will will fix that? Um, I don't know. I don't have an answer for you on that. The Jets are losers of four straight with their already small playoff chances now on life support. All right, down in the high school ranks, Niskuna and Somers battling for a chance to get to the Class A state title game early on. Silver Warriors on the doorstep. Reverse play, Cam Grasso getting the edge and scoring. Niski up 7-0 to the second quarter. Somers responds. Max Sullivan on the QB keeper, barreling his way into the end zone. 7-7 then. Seconds before the half, Sullivan again 14-7, Somers with all the momentum going to the break. 21-7 now, last gasp for Niski in the fourth. They break out a trick play. Grasso's pass is intercepted, and that would just about do it. Niski Una's season ends in the state semifinals, 21-7. And in Class D, how about the Stillwater Warriors? Stillwater taking down Haldane in the state semifinal game 21-20. The Warriors stopping Haldane on a two-point try to hang on with no time left. Stillwater, for the first time ever, punches their ticket to the Dome for next weekend's title game. And the action will not end there. We've got three more high school football state semifinal matchups tomorrow and up in the college ranks union, taking on Johns Hopkins for a spot in the NCAA Tournament's Elite Eight. Now over to the hardwood. We've got a big one on Sunday. U Albany and Siena battling for the Albany Cup. Lots of excitement year in and year out for this crosstown rivalry. And following a 75-62 victory last year, the Saints say they're ready to retain the cup. It's going to be about us in, in a consistent effort, not getting too high or getting too low. Obviously, basketball is a game of mistakes, a game of runs. And um, now it's just going to be instead of seven or 6,000 people, there's going to be 10 or 11,000 people, hopefully. Um, and hopefully a lot of people come and support. And, uh, you know, downtown Albany is alive and well. Two teams looking to pick up early wins in their season. Tip-off from a packed MVP arena set for 5 p.m. on Sunday, always, guys. Always a great atmosphere mm -hmm. at that game. Should every be pretty loud. Season. And pretty intense yes, rivalry. That is, well. that, that is true. That doesn't hurt. Uh, yeah. Weather-wise, a couple of decent days for Thanksgiving yeah, Black uh, Friday. Right. right, it's been yeah. very quiet. We'll call it travel friendly. And tomorrow looks good with some sunshine. We'll watch Sunday night rain, some elevation snow. So stay tuned to Sam and Craig Adams over the weekend. They'll have updates. We'll be here for you. Thank you for watching us here tonight. Have a great weekend, everyone.